Welcome everyone to episode one of HyperChange Breaking News. I'm your host, Gally. And your co-host, Aiden. We're going to cover some of the most exciting news in technology today. First up, we got OpenAI drama. Elon Musk, an actual founder of OpenAI when it was a nonprofit, is now suing OpenAI, saying the company has breached its founding agreement by now putting profit ahead of benefiting humanity. OpenAI punches back against Elon, saying that they've always stayed true to their mission of making AI open and they pushed back against some of the facts that Elon has stated in public and showed emails between Elon Musk and OpenAI showing that what he's been saying publicly is incorrect. This is certainly showing up to be a battle for the history books between OpenAI and Elon Musk and one of the most powerful new technologies in the world. AI. The memes are heating up as well, and it is getting ugly. I got to say, Elon Musk saying he'll drop the suit if OpenAI changes their name to Closed AI. Vinod Kosla, the VC who was the first check into OpenAI, with a pretty low blow meme here of the OpenAI versus Grok. I mean, I got to say, though, as someone watching from the sidelines, this is getting pretty entertaining. For Vinod Kosla, 70 years old, posting the, this meme, and I mean, it sure shows his... Uh ability to stay hip with culture. For tree huggers and green energy folks alike, today was a massive day for Rivian as they unveiled their R2, which was to be expected that they've been hyping up for many months now, but they also came out with two additional products, the R3, a smaller version of the R2, and the R3X. I was actually able to attend a viewing of the unveil at the Rivian store here in Seattle. The energy was electric. The internet is fired up about this. Here's the kilowatts recapping the specs. A 2026 launch with a $45,000 starting price, a zero to 60 time of less than three seconds with more than 300 miles of range. The electric vehicle world is rattled. These are specs and prices that only Tesla has really been able to show so far. If Rivian can pull this off, this is set to be a game-changing product and the first real legitimate Model Y contender. Speaking of the Model Y, Farzad put up the Model Y head to head against the R2 as they come in as very similar sizes and the R2 matches better in the zero to 60 time and miles of range. So this is really giving consumers a whole new option of what they could buy as they look to go green with their cars. And the stock market was loving this news. Rivian shares had a nice run during the day today on the back of this epic product unveil. Rivian's R2 at just $45,000 massively expands the TAM for the company. And now the question is just, will they be able to get enough capital to pull this off? Rivian has about nine or 10 billion in the bank, burning one and a half billion a quarter. So you do the math, that's less than two years of runway and their vehicle is more than two years away from entering production. So it seems like they're probably gonna need to raise capital um, at some point on very interesting dynamics here with an incredible product, incredible hype, but economics and business model that are not matching that same level. Not to mention their first two products, the R1T and the RS, R1S, are still not profitable. So as they plan to ramp up a cheaper version, they have a whole existing stream of products that are losing money every sale. So this puts them in a very tough cash position as they look to kind of get their business into profitability. So that had us thinking. How do they turn the corner on this? How do they strengthen their balance sheet? How do they create a next generation automotive company? Well, what if they partner with a company that was just thinking about cars and recently shut down their program? What if Apple partnered with Rivian? Apple has $100 billion on the balance sheet. It would be the perfect collaborator with Rivian. I mean, the timing on this would be incredible. Rivian was worth $100 billion when they IPO'd. Now the valuation plummeting to about $12 billion. That's nothing for Apple who's got a massive war chest, is producing 100 billions of profits per year. They could make this acquisition with no dilution. And then those 70 plus thousand Rivians on the road, soon to be a few hundred thousand, would provide an amazing flywheel of data for Apple to actually be able to pull off developing its self-driving car. Now, this would be a bold and crazy move for the company, but the timing of Rivian needing the cash, having the amazing R2 product, and Apple getting exposure to a new growth category were just too much um, for us to ignore, and not to mention the design, the swag, uh, the ethos of what RJ and Rivian are doing seem to be very in line with Apple's brand. Speaking of very futuristic cars, just a few days ago, Elon just tweeted out that they radically increased the design goals for the Tesla Roadster. He said there'll never be another car like this, if you can even call it a car. 
It's cl Tesla will be collaborating with SpaceX and is planning to unveil this product later this year. And it could be the most mind-blowing demo of all time. In classic X fashion, we've got Elon Musk replying to customers about the vehicle. He's saying that the 0 60 to time could be less than one second. And that is, quote, the least interesting part of the vehicle. He also replied to Tesla owner Silicon Valley with the eyes emoji when asked if it could fly a little. So where are we putting two and two together here? We're hearing rumors of a cold gas SpaceX thruster on the vehicle. Literally, you press a button, James Bond style, and you are having a rocket launch you and flying through the road or the skies. Uh, I mean, this is a this is a game changer. This is it's a crazy, I'm, crazy. I'm not sure how I would personally use that function, but you know what? Maybe they're going to get into racing. Who knows? The last time the Roadster was on the road was in 2012 when they were selling it. This was Tesla's first model car from 2008 to 2012. And they promised to come out with a Roadster for many years now of the next iteration, but they've always been delayed. So we'll see if this end of year timeline is still going to be on track. But nonetheless, the collaboration with SpaceX, the ability to fly has all of us wondering what could entail in this product. It sure has me excited. Setting up for a viral moment for sure at the unveil. Now in our next piece of news, Bigger Robotics has raised $675 million at a $2.6 billion valuation with the who's who of the AI community backing them. OpenAI, NVIDIA, Microsoft, Bezos, Intel are all getting behind this new humanoid robot startup. This company was just founded in 2022. The last company that the CEO founded, Brett Audock, was called Archer, and they have yet to commercialize a product. So it has a lot of us thinking, is this gonna is this hype or is this really gonna make it on the market? With that said, their collaboration with OpenAI and large language models are gonna make it easier for us to interact with humanoid robots. Very exciting time. And a lot of people are saying that this humanoid robot could be the true killer app for AI, combining that software that somebody like OpenAI has with the robot to do tasks is gonna be a real game changer for the economy. And that's why big tech is throwing so much money at this problem. We look at this demo right here, we'll see the figure robot watch someone previously make a coffee and then able to do it. Quite interesting to see where this is gonna go. Very impressive demo so far. They have actually also announced a collaboration with BMW to try and bring robots into the automotive manufacturing process. Unclear if this is hype and how much the robots are actually doing on the factory floor, but it is notable that Figure is signing these commercial agreements. And now the question is, is this gonna be another Archer? Will the founders move on before commercializing the product or will Figure really see this through and actually try and compete with Tesla? And it's worth noting that Elon Musk on X replied to a post about Figure just saying, bring it on. I would, I would not. not. I would yeah. not want to go up against Elon. I mean, right? don't, bet, don't bet against Elon, but we'll, we'll see what happens here. And some other news, speaking of AI and the revolution that's happening there, NVIDIA is up 92% just in the first few months of 2024 alone, not to mention up over 2000% over the last five years. AI seems to be a massive boom for the NVIDIA business. And it's now skyrocketing itself the third most valuable company in the world behind Microsoft and Apple. This is crazy. I mean, people are trying to figure out if this is an AI bubble or not. NVIDIA has seen insane growth in its earnings, but still nothing to the likes of Apple and Microsoft, whose valuation it is approaching here. Going to be very interesting to see if NVIDIA will continue to climb and really be the backbone of the AI revolution, or if this is just a lot of hype and we will see some consolidation soon with shares coming back down to earth. But one thing's for sure, the growth, the profits, and the stock. I mean, this is an epic company and case study to follow. In some ways, NVIDIA is holding up the entire market with their rapid rise. So it'll be interesting to see if NVIDIA falters, how the market falls with it. In our last piece of AI news, Anthropic unveils what they're calling a world-leading AI with Claude 3, um, an improvement over their previous models and an attempt to try and compete with ChatGPT. Now across various metrics, Claude shows to be better at things like math and coding. But keep in mind, just because you perform better doesn't mean that you're going to get consumer adoption. So who's going to be able to dominate the AI space, create the interface that works directly with customers? We'll see. I use Claude personally to help with creative writing, and it's very useful there. But still, my go-to AI varies between OpenAI, Claude, Perplexity. So we'll see who's going to be able to create the one product in the customer experience that people go to 
or if we're going to be in a world where many different AIs exist. Funded by Amazon and Google, it is fascinating to see big tech throw so much money at all these AI power moves, whether it's figure, whether it's anthropic, there is a clear, insane appetite to get a piece of the pie of this future AGI, uh, you know, AI technology that could really be some of the most powerful thing humanity's ever seen. Now, our startup of the week is Navier, electric flying boat startup based in San Francisco, California, that flies four feet above the water. By doing so, they're able to eliminate a lot of the drag typically associated with boats that have to push water. This makes it one of the most efficient electric boats in the world and promises to transform our waterways into highways. Gal, you just went on the boat. Can you tell us a little bit about your experience? The Navier is a game changer. Uh, led by Sam Preeti and a team of insane engineers in the Bay Area, they're developing what they call a flying boat, essentially an ultra-efficient electric hydrofoil that flies above the water, reducing drag, improving energy efficiency, while offering a much smoother ride for passengers. In the long run, if this water taxi technology can bring down costs of moving on the water, this could totally transform our coastal cities with moving people via water taxis, moving cargo around ports um, in an electric and highly efficient way. This is extremely exciting. And I got to say, riding it made me feel like boats had been in beta until this moment. Also, Elon Musk was spotted on one of these boats and apparently is quite fond of the design. So that's another vote of confidence here. Not to mention they recently signed a partnership with Stripe, and that'll be going out later in a few months from now, and that they'll be delivering their first few products later this year. So stay tuned for more. And then the AI image of the week. Aiden, take it away. What are we looking at here? The Roman Empire becomes a galactic empire and what that would look like. This looks pretty exciting to me as you kind of have someone on a horse with a sword and you see inspiring spacefaring ships in the background. I sure love this image and it gets me fired up about our techno-optimistic future. And a great note to end on. This has been the first episode of HyperChange Breaking News, bringing you all the updates from the world of technology in a fun and positive way. I gotta say, I get fired up looking at these AI images. It is up to us to create an exciting future. Um, and I feel like we have so much potential and that doesn't get mentioned enough. Can't wait to see you all next week. Thanks for tuning in.